It's finally here. The video so many have been waiting for. I finally get to discuss the differences between CDs and high-res streaming to determine which is better and which you should be listening to. Make sure to watch all the way through because the results may surprise you. Let's get to it. It's no secret that I take a lot of pride in my CDs and have filmed many videos championing the format. However, uh, high res streaming is here and has been here for quite a while. I sometimes feel like it's getting dangerously close to the quality of my beloved CD and I want to get to the bottom of it. Let's go over the science. CDs have a standard audio resolution of 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz, while high res streaming can offer higher resolutions, typically up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz. A higher bit depth and sample rate is said to result in a better dynamic range, more detail, and more accurate representation of the original recording. I suppose this can really boil down to the DAC you are using. Let's say, I don't know, I'm using an amazing CD player with a remarkable output stage, and on the other hand, I could be using a budget streamer with a cheap caca off the shelf DAC. It doesn't take an engineer to make the assumption that in this scenario, the CD player will sound leaps and bounds better than streaming. However, what if the tables are turned? What if I'm listening to a super budget CD player with a dreadful output stage and a horrible components inside? Compare it to, let's say, you know, the Audiophonics Evo Saber, which I feel performed in ways hitherto undreamt of. Did you seriously just say hitherto undreamt of? Let's just say it's really good. So in this comparison, of course, the streamer would be the more pleasant experience. I know people want to know which sounds better in just black or white, absolute answer. However, there are so many variables that we must consider to even begin making an educated guess as to which sounds better. Now, if we're talking just files versus files and take the gear out of the equation, that is a better way to look at it. The 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz resolution of CDs was established based on the limits of human hearing. The 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate was chosen because it is roughly double the highest frequency humans can hear, which is around 20 kilohertz. In accordance with the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, the diehard streaming fans hate me right now when CD lovers bring this up. This theorem states that the sampling rate should be at least twice the highest frequency present in the signal to avoid alien and accurately reproduce the original audio. The 16-bit depth was chosen to provide a sufficient dynamic range for music reproduction. A 16-bit system has a dynamic range of 96 decibels, which is typically more than adequate for representing the dynamic range of most music recordings. I'll explain dynamic range a bit more to get a better understanding of it all. Dynamic range is the difference between the softest and loudest sounds that a system can play. For digital audio, this is related to something called bit depth. So when you hear that a 16 bit system has a 96 decibel dynamic range, it means the loudest sound can be 96 decibels louder than the softest sound. Think of it like the range of volume a stereo can play without no distortion. Now, let's talk about the signal to noise ratio. This is a way to measure how clear the audio signal is compared to the background noise. A higher signal to noise ratio means the audio is cleaner and has less noise. Imagine listening to your favorite song on a quiet beach versus a noisy construction site. The beach would have a higher signal to noise ratio because the music is clearer compared to the noise around you. So can we hear noise beyond 96 decibels? Under normal listening conditions, it's tough to hear noise when you have a 96 decibel dynamic range or signal to noise ratio. Our ears can handle a range of about 120 decibels, but we usually don't use that much in daily life because of background noises and the need to protect our hearing. For most people, a 96 decibel dynamic range or signal to noise ratio is more than enough to enjoy high quality audio. That being said, there are specific situations like in professional audio production where having a higher dynamic range and signal to noise ratio can be helpful. This is because when you're recording and mixing multiple sounds, having a higher initial signal to noise ratio can help keep the audio clean throughout the process. The benefits of recording and mixing at a higher resolution can still translate to improved audio quality on the final CD. When a higher resolution recording is converted to the CD format, a process called dithering is used to minimize, kind of a dirty word, dithering, is used to minimize the impact of reducing the bit depth from, say, I don't know, 24-bit to 16-bit. This helps maintain the integrity of the audio signal and can result in a CD that sounds better than one made from a lower resolution recording. So, recording and mixing at a higher bit depth and higher signal-to-noise ratio 
can lead to a cleaner, more detailed audio signal. Although the final CD may not have the same resolution as the original recording, the benefits of working with a higher resolution source can still improve the overall listening experience for the end user. Now, the question I ask myself is, can a CD recorded from a higher resolution file sound similar or better than the streamed version of the same file? The answer is yes and no. A CD recorded from a higher resolution file can potentially sound similar or even better than the streamed version of the same file. There are a few factors that can contribute to this outcome. It's highly dependent on personal preferences, listening environments, and the quality of audio equipment, which can influence the perceived sonic differences between a CD recorded from a high res file and the streamed version. In some cases, the difference might be slight or even insignificant, while in others, it could be more pronounced. At the end of the day, the quality of the recording, mastering, and playback equipment, as well as individual hearing abilities, can influence one's ability to perceive any potential difference between CD quality audio and higher resolutions via streaming. It sucks, guys. I'm sorry that I can't say black or white because there are just too many variables. It would be much easier if the question was, does a CD sound better than Spotify? Yes, all day, without a shadow of a doubt. But with services like Quobuzz on the market, it makes it more difficult, especially when you pair a nice streaming device with an amazing DAC. It really makes it hard to have a confident argument on whether one sounds better to the other. You know, it, it's a shame that we've split ourselves into these separate camps when it comes to enjoying music. We should really be embracing both formats. Streaming offers endless discovery, amazing quality, and convenience, making it so easy to find your next favorite song as you dive down the rabbit hole. On the other hand, CDs provide a high quality, tactile, and nostalgic experience where you can truly own the music and hold a physical piece of a musician's hard work. There's something special in both formats, so why not enjoy the best of both worlds? Now, is a CD good enough? Yes, of course. To be honest, the difference between streaming and CD on comparable devices going through the same DAC are negligible, subtle at best. So to definitively answer your question, yes, a CD should be good enough for you to enjoy a high quality reproduction of the music you're listening to. Does the listener need 24 bits? Not really. The extra headroom is fantastic during the recording, mixing, and mastering process, but when it comes to being streamed and sometimes compressed via streaming services, it just doesn't translate to that clean original recording. I guess the solution here is to create a CD that can provide 24-bit, 196 kilohertz just to quell any doubts. I'd be so happy. I know many of you won't agree with this and will argue one or the other. And if you want to have a civil discussion about the topic in my Discord or in the comments, I'd be happy to engage with you. However, I find both to be endearing, enjoyable, and necessary in this day and age. Real quick, guys, sorry to interrupt. I want to give away this new Metallica CD. Uh, I bought it for you guys. I don't listen to newer Metallica stuff. So I would like to give this to you. So whoever comments down below, I will choose one of you if you do really love Metallica and want this thing. If you comment on the video, just put I love Metallica, or if you just love Metallica, put I love Metallica. Either way, I'll choose someone by Sunday of this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and got something from it. If you did, I would love for you to just slap the like button. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, I'll see you on the next one.